Welcome back. During the last week, we had looked at an introduction to dplyr, and specifically, we had looked at the concept of a table, which is a modified version of a data frame. And then we had gone on to look at how we can use the filter function to do all kinds of uh, filtering of the data. Of course, we could also do this with our old uh, data frame syntax, but it's just a little bit more clean and more efficient with dplyr. So today we're going to look at uh, some more features of dplyr to do other things other than just filter. Let's look at this function called arrange. So the arrange function uh, is used to order the data, right? So the input data frame might be, the rows might be in any order. With the arrange, you can control the ordering of the data. So for example, suppose I say arrange flights, and flights of course is our uh, data frame, uh, from uh, the NYC uh, Flights 13 data frame containing all the flight details for uh, flights that left from New York City in the year 2013. So here we say arrange flights by year, month and day. Okay, what this means is arrange them primarily by year and of course all the records correspond to the year 2013 so it doesn't really matter. But suppose you had data for multiple years, then what you're saying is arrange the data by year and within a year, arrange it by month and within month, arrange it by day. Okay, so that's really what's going on here. Uh, so you can arrange the data by not just one field as in this example. In this example, we are arranging the data by just one field. Arrange flights by descending order of arrival delay. So clearly that tells us that the default ordering is ascending order. Right, which is low to high. But if you want it the other way, you can always use descending uh, to get the appropriate uh, ordering that you like. Of course, as always, uh, the code that you require is uh, has already been posted. So all of this code that you're seeing on the slides is obviously available, and you could be executing the code side by side as you're looking at the slide, right? In fact, I would strongly encourage you to do that. So stop every slide, go back, execute the code, examine the code, and then come back to the slide. Okay, otherwise just looking at slide after slide with lots of code uh, may not be very productive for you. Okay, now as this slide is showing you, the missing values are always relegated to the end of the, uh, of the output. Okay, now incidentally, when you say arrange, right, when you execute a function like arrange, what you get back as a result of the process is a new table. Okay, it's not that the original table has been changed in any way. The original table flight flights remains exactly as it is. Absolutely no change to it. But what you're getting back is uh, a copy of that table, but arranged in the way in which you're asking for it. Okay, so arrange does not change the ordering of the underlying data. Okay, so let's look at some examples applications of uh, arrange function. So sort the flights to find the most delayed ones. Okay, uh, and of course that's really what's going on here. You're sorting the flights in descending order of arrival delay, if that's what we mean by a delayed flight, right? So obviously the top ones uh, that appear in this output will be the ones with the high delays. Okay, so it's really the same thing uh, that we saw earlier. So arranging flights by descending order of arri arrival delay will show us the first, the ones that are most delayed. Again, just try it out see the results and then go on. So now let's do something a little more sophisticated. Let's sort the flights to find the fastest flights, which is by speed, okay? Now what you note, of course, is that inside the data frame, there is no column called speed, okay? Instead, what you have is the distance and the time, okay? So what you want to do is to sort not by a particular field, but by an expression. So here we are saying arrange the flights by descending order of distance divided by air time. Okay, so distance by time, of course, is the speed. How much uh, distance was covered in what time? That is the uh, speed, uh, the miles. Distance is in miles, air time is in minutes. So it's the miles per minute that you have here. If you want to take miles per hour, you can always multiply it by 60. So here we are arranging it by descending order of distance by time. Okay, now if you run this code, you will not see a column called distance by time. Okay, it's only arranged in that order. Okay, we did not create a new column for speed. 
okay so you will still see only the original columns but they will now be uh, arranged in descending order of uh, speed okay so that is something that is also important to understand once again i reiterate that this doesn't change anything in the original data frame uh, original table it's just creating a new table and showing you the results now incidentally it's creating a new table but since we are not assigning the result to anything this table is not stored anywhere it's just completely it's just simply displayed okay if you wanted to want to store it somewhere then you have to assign the result to something and we'll see examples of that later on okay so that's about the filter uh, function uh, about the arrange function to do the to control the order of display now let's look at the select function we use the select function to select a subset of the columns of the data so let's see so here we are doing here select flights year month day so if you execute this line of code and i think you should should stop this and execute this line of code uh, what you'll see is that you get a resultant table which has only three columns year month and day okay so that's what select does select is to get a subset of the columns whereas filter and arrange gave back all the columns select will give us only the columns that we ask for so for example here we can say select flights year month and suppose we said day day that is we selected day twice okay the nice part about this uh, about dplyr is that it simply ignores the duplicate it knows that it's a duplicate there's really no point in displaying it so it ignores the duplicate okay now we could also do things like selecting all the columns between some specific columns so in this case we can do select all the columns between year and day right what do we mean by that well the columns are in a particular order inside the data frame and we want all the columns starting from year up to day okay so you can use the colon operator to get that select flights of, uh, comma year colon day okay. or you can say select all the columns except something except those between year and day we could always choose the minus sign to do that minus year colon day note the parentheses here okay that's because of operator precedence i guess the minus unary has a higher precedence than the colon so if you did minus year colon day without the parentheses uh, then you're not going to get the results you want okay? so you need to put the parentheses around here okay or you could also do other fancy things from the name of the columns so for example here we are saying select from the flights uh, table all the columns whose name contain the words delay which means arrival delay departure delay all of those things right so those are the two columns that end up getting selected of course all the rows because we are only selecting we are not putting any conditions on the on the columns so we're getting all the rows or uh, we're not putting any conditions on the rows so we're getting all the rows i've only shown five of the rows here right? so you could so you could do contains delay which means the variable name contains delay and only these two columns match. okay or you could do starts with so any column whose name starts with ARR, so ARR time, ARR delay, or two such columns, so you get back only those two, uh, those two columns. Of course, you get back all the rows. Okay, so these are things, and there are lots of other such helper functions. For example, starts with we've already looked at, contains we've already looked at. You could also do ends with, contains, matches, and then you can do a regular expression. Of course, we haven't covered anything about regular expressions yet. Uh, later in the course i'll spend a little bit of time talking about regular expressions so when you learn that you will also be able to use the matches function or you could use num range and then x uh, you know one colon three so what this does is this creates a number range x1 to x3 so any column names who have uh, the names uh, columns who have the names x1 x2 or x3 would get selected so you've got all of these options with the uh, uh, helper functions that you can use along with select let us now look at another function this function is called rename uh, that is uh, you've got certain column names if for whatever reason you want to change the column names to something that you find more convenient uh, then you can use the rename function so for example sometimes you'll get data frames with simple uh, you know, un, uh, unfriendly user name, uh, column names like x1 x2 x3 y35 Right. Now you know what those column names mean. So in order to help you to analyze your data better, you may want to simply change the column names. That is when rename comes into play. 
Okay, so here we are saying, let's take the flight data frame. There is a column called tail number. Okay, just uh, tail number of the aircraft, which is the unique identifier for an aircraft, like, just like a VIN number for a car or a registration number for a car. Okay, so the tail number is that. And uh, just to follow the convention of the other column names, where underscores separate the different parts of the name, we could rename that column to tail underscore now. Okay, so if you do that, you get this result. And then, of course, in the columns that are actually shown, you don't see the tail num column at all because it's in a different position. What you're seeing here is it's right here. Okay, so the tail num column is here. Earlier it was tail num without the underscore. Now, because we renamed it, it's come with the underscore. Okay, now once again, I emphasize nothing has happened to the original data frame flights. What you're getting back is a new table with the changed column name. Okay, so that is something that you must always keep in mind. Okay, you can also use this function called everything. Everything is a function that gives back to you all the columns. Okay, now you may say, why do I need to do uh, use even select when I want everything? Uh, the advantage of that is suppose sometimes you want to reorder the column. So for example, suppose I want the, the time hour column to come up to the front of the display. So I can say select flights, time hour, air time. So those two columns, I want them to come up front in the display. And then I say everything, right? So everything is really all the columns. But we already know that if the same, if one column appears duplicate multiple times, it's not going to worry about the duplicates. It's going to ignore the duplicates. So therefore, what you'll actually end up getting is the time hour as the first column, air time as the second column, and everything else as subsequent columns. So that's what's going to happen when you do this. Okay. So you see here time hour, air time, and then everything else goes as it is. Right? Now this everything function here works well for us because uh, we are able to reorder the columns in the manner that we want. And because of the fact that uh, the, all of these dplyr functions avoid duplicates, so even though we are specifying duplicate columns, it's not going to affect us. Okay, So this is just convenient sometimes. For display, you want to do this, and that's useful. Okay. Now, mutate is when you want to add columns to an existing table. Right? So computed columns, typically, that's what we do. So for example, I'm creating a, a new table called flights small, flights underscore small, meaning a smaller table. And of course, we are using select, select flights, and I'm selecting all the column from, columns from year to day and I'm also selecting columns whose names end with delay. And I want to select the distance column and the air time column. Okay. So you can just add as many criteria as you like to, uh, you know, to specifically get the columns that you want. Okay. So you can do that. So in this case, of course, we are doing this with a select. Okay. And uh, we are only selecting these particular columns. Now, one thing you'll note is when we did filter, when we put multiple conditions, they were all separated with, uh, they were all connected by an AND. So only conditions, uh, rows that met all of those conditions were satisfied. That doesn't apply here. Here, we are talking of select, which means we are only picking up columns. Okay. So here we can, uh, whatever we put in here, everything will get selected for us. So right, you're going to get the columns from here to day. You're also going to get the columns that end with delay, whose names end with delay. You're also going to get distance and air time, right? So you're going to get all of these columns. So we created, with a select, we created a, a new data frame. Now what we are saying is, to this data frame, we want to add a new column, okay? To the uh, flight small table. So we are saying mutate. Okay, that's the function to add a new column to make changes. So flight small, which is the table that we just created up here, and then we want to look at the amount of time that the flight has actually made up in flight. Okay, so which is arrival delay minor de minus departure delay. Okay, so if arrival delay is smaller than departure delay, then uh, it gained some time. Okay, uh, otherwise, of course, it lost time. So we'll know that. that that's what we call as a gain. And then we also add another column called speed which is distance by air time times 60. So this time we are converting the speed into miles per hour from uh, miles per minute. Distance is in minutes, air time is in, uh, sorry, distance is in miles, air time is in minutes. 
So distance divided by air time is uh, miles per minute multiplied by 60, we get miles per hour. Okay, so the, the point here is that we are adding two new columns to the flight small uh, data uh, table. So we end up getting two new columns, but of course, the old columns will also still be there. So these are just additional columns, right? So if you run the code, you will find that what you get from this uh, will have all the columns here from flight small plus it will have two more columns. Okay. So again, a question, does mutate add columns to the original? The answer is no. The original doesn't change at all. So just to verify that, let's do dim flight small, right? which will tell us how many rows and columns are in flight small. right? And then dim of mutate uh, this, this thing. So right when you do mutates, of course, you will see that there are two new columns because this is uh, the result of mutate is a new table with two additional columns. But if you did uh, uh, this thing and then you add one more column, okay, sorry, I just need to, okay. But now if you go and uh, do after this, if you go and do uh, dim flight small, okay, you see that nothing has changed. Dim flight small, even after doing mutate, that still remains what it was. Okay. So none of these functions change the underlying data frame at all. Right? So if you want the changed version, then you need to store it just like we did in this slide. So in this slide, if we had simply done select, then it would have displayed on the output and nothing would have happened. But you know, so well, nothing would have changed in the original data frame. We want the changed data frame uh, table to be stored. So we stored it explicitly in a new table, in a new variable called flight small. And then we were able to use that in the subsequent command. Okay, so that's very important to understand. So uh, none of these operations add any columns to the original or in fact make any changes to the origin. Okay, so here, uh, incidentally note that when you're doing mutate, we are defining new columns, right? So we said mutate flight small gain equals arrival delay minus departure delay. That's a new column we've created, right? And hours equals air time by 60. That's again another new column that we've created. But we can create a new column gain per hour that is based on not just the original columns like gain and hours were, but based on the new columns that we just created, right? So we were able to say gain divided by hours, but these were columns that were just created right here, okay? So the point is mutate can also refer to the new columns that you're creating within the mutate itself.